Hello and welcome back to Gage Hill Crafts. My name is Sarah and as promised I have a new pattern for you um, or I will do very soon. Um, I'm not exactly sure if I'm going to get the pattern released at the same time that the test knit's going to start for this um, poncho that I'm wearing. Um, so there's a little bit of sorting out to do, but when this pattern does come out, it will be free. Um, and I wanted to release a free pattern partially because this is a fairly simple design, but also just as a thank you um, to everyone, you know, for following along with us and, um, you know, downloading and knitting my other patterns. I thought this was a nice way to give back. So this design, um, which I'm calling Six Striped Poncho or Striped Poncho, haven't quite decided on a, a final name. If you have any suggestions, let me know. So this pattern design was inspired um, really out of necessity. Um, I received a whole bunch of skeins of Harrisville uh, Highland yarn. The, this is their worsted weight yarn. Um, and no two skeins were the same color. So I had to figure out a way to use up um, a whole bunch of different colors in a design and decided on another poncho. Um, I like a poncho. I get a lot of compliments on my Prospect Street poncho whenever I wear that out. Um, that was the one of the first designs I came out with back in 2018 and it has an all-over texture. Um, it's knit actually with the same yarn, the Harrisville Highland yarn. Um, so I knew it would drape well and look great in a poncho. The question was, what could I do that was a little different? And there are some other striped ponchos out there, of course. There's there's uh, theme and variations on this. If you look on a site like Ravelry that has a lot of patterns, you'll certainly find some other striped ponchos. Um, but this one is just a little bit different. It's not quite like anything I've seen out there. Um, a lot of the striped ones are actually crocheted, uh, which looks really cool. And so this one is knit. It's knit in garter stitch. And um, as you can see, the stripe uh, heights or depths vary across the poncho. And they vary in a, a very particular way. Um, I wanted sort of a random look, a non-repeating random look, but something that also looked cohesive. So I was pretty careful about how I plotted out each color and the repeats and the stripes between each color. Um, as the name Six Stripe Poncho, if we end up with going with that, uh, would suggest um, that there would be six stripes. There's not really six stripes, there's six colors. Um, and again, this was to use up as much of the Harrisville yarn as I could. Um, and I wanted to vary uh, both the tones and the amount of contrast between the stripes so that the stripes would really shine. Um, this is knit in two rectangles that you sew together, so it's the same kind of construction as a lot of other ponchos. Um, same as my Prospect Street poncho. It is a little tiny bit smaller than Prospect Street. I wanted something that wasn't quite so unwieldy. Um, and this came out to just a couple of inches shorter if you're wearing it with the points in front. Um, but it still has nice coverage over the arms, so it's still going to keep you nice and warm this way. Um, it's just going to be a little bit shorter from kind of neck to the front tip. Um, and hopefully that will be more accommodating to um, more people and not be quite so uh, oversized. So I did switch up and make one modification between the two pieces that I knit in my sample. Um, and I'll, I'll tell you how to do that more in the pattern um, as well. Um, but if you look, uh, this side of me has more of the bright orangey yellow color. It's a little bit um, brighter overall in feel because of that. And then on this side, I swapped the neutral and the bright orange, and this just tones it down a little bit. Um, gives you more of that 70s uh, refrigerator colors or something. Um, and so it's interesting to me how um, just making one minor change, swapping one of the colors, um, can really make this a very different looking piece. Um, so that's, it's a way to get creative and the final version of the pattern is going to have a coloring page so that you can color in um, all of your selections in each of the stripes and see if you like how they work together before you sit down to knit. Um, so I hope you will give this one a try. Um, like other ponchos that are knit this way, you can also wear this um, with the stripes going horizontal across 
your chest and longer sleeves and then the points come down over your hands. So it is somewhat convertible um, and it's just really warm. If you do use the Harrisville yarns, it's, it's a lovely woolen spun yarn that's light and lofty but very toasty and also very hard wearing. Um, my other poncho that I have uh, out of Highland I've had now for about five or six years and it still almost looks you know brand new. It doesn't have any wear spots on it no snags, it's it's not um, sagging out of shape or anything like that. So this yarn really holds up well. Of course, um, you could use other yarns for this. You can really use any worsted weight yarn that you like. Um, this is knit on a size US 9 needle, which is I think a five and a half millimeter. Um, so it's a fairly open gauge for worsted weight yarn, but again, that's gonna give it a lighter loftier feel and better drape than having it knit at a super tight gauge. Um, and for the uh, test knit, I um, will put all of the information about this um, in the Ravelry page for Gage Hill Crafts, sorry, the Ravelry group for Gage Hill Crafts. Um, that's where we're going to run the test knit. And so if you're interested in test knitting this for me, you can head over there and I have five um, assorted skeins kits that I'm going to put together for five test knitters. Um, if you have your own yarn that you want to use for a test knit, that's fine too. Um, and you can even mix and match across brands as long as they're all roughly um, a worsted weight. I think they should work well together. So I'll open this up for a maximum of 10 test knitters, um, but the first five to commit to the test knit will get yarn from me that you can use. Um, and I will uh, put up photographs of the different color combinations that I have available for this. Um, if you're watching this uh, after the fact, after the test knitting process is over and the pattern's released, um, there will be a lot of tips in the pattern in terms of how to choose your colors um, in order to get the stripes to both coordinate but also pop and look good together um, if you're not sure how to pick colors. My general philosophy with this um, and in putting together these test knit kits was to choose two colors from one color family. So in here you can see I have a very dark green and then a light green. Um, two colors from another color family. So here I have these oranges. I have this um, very autumnal sort of burnt orange color and then I have this bright um, I'm, I keep referring to it as like Velveeta cheese because it really is this kind of bright yellowy orange color. Um, an accent color that falls into neither of those families, so the accent would be blue here, and then a neutral, which would be this taupe. And that's kind of the, the guiding principle behind the different kits that I've put together for this as well. Um, but, you know, again, if you're going to use this as a scrappy project, a way to use up yarn, leftovers, or random skeins that you've accumulated, you could put it together however you'd like. Um, that's just one idea for how you can, can play around with your colors if you're not sure. Two from one color family, two from another color family. Make sure there's some contrast in tone between those. And then a bright accent, and then a neutral. And that would probably... Um, you know, you could, you could do a lot of different groupings within that, um, but that's a nice guideline to use. Um, I know that there is, um, there are a few kind of movements or calls to action in terms of knitting from stash, particularly in 2020. Um, I think everybody, you know, really celebrated a lot of the festivals and the events in 2019. Um, a lot of those events uh, and fiber fairs and markets grew. Um, in participation this year, and I guess everybody kind of binged on yarn, and now everyone's trying to go on a yarn diet. Um, I'm not, nor do I necessarily advocate for that, but if it's something that you're choosing for yourself, um, then absolutely, I think uh, this poncho is a great pattern for that. Um, again, it's going to be free, and um, you can mix and match um, different skeins depending on what you have for leftovers or you know, maybe one-off skeins that you bought as souvenirs or something that are just sitting in your stash and you're not sure what to do with. Um, I would love to also see some people doing, working with, you know, spe uh, speckled yarns or incorporating uh, maybe a slightly variegated yarn into the mix. I will see what, what that would do. Um, so yeah, if you want to do that and you want to be a test knitter, 
absolutely just contact me via the Gecho Crafts Ravelry group and um, we will get you set up with the test net. Um, the test net is going to run, I think, through the end of February, but again, I'm going to put all the details in the Ravelry group. And again, if you're watching this after the test netting period is over, just head to Ravelry, head to the um, Gecho Crafts pattern page, and you'll find something, um, you'll find this pattern uh, under whatever name it ends up being. Um, probably something like Stripe Poncho or Six Stripe Poncho. Um, those are the leading candidates. So thanks very much for joining me. Um, I appreciate, uh, you know, again, your attention and your time and all that. And I look forward to knitting along with you throughout the year on different projects. Um, if you have anything that you're excited to work on uh, in the first part of this year, or if you're doing the Make 9 Challenge that I mentioned in the last video, feel free to leave a comment and let us know what you're up to. Thanks a lot, and we'll see you next week. Cheers.